Hello there guys, this is Landro off of the Wild Hammer EU server uh, bringing you a Healbot tutorial video. Now you have to bear with me as we go through this video because Healbot's quite a complex uh, add-on um, but from a UI perspective it's quite customizable so I'll go through some of the things that you will be wanting to customize if you're using um, Healbot as your healing UI of choice. Now firstly you want to obviously bring up the Healbot options menu and you can do that by clicking the little icon on your on your minimap thusly uh, and what you'll then get is your um, your Healbot menu uh, and as I said there's lots of options lots of customizable stuff there it looks quite daunting when you first click on it but as you get the hang of it you'll find it just fine. Uh, to start with the first thing you'll do is obviously you'll want to get the spells relevant to the clicks that you want. So for example, I will talk this as if you've got a three button mouse because most people tend to have, most casual gamers will have a, a three button mouse. Uh, and what that means is you'll be having to use modifiers for uh, the multiple spells that you have at your disposal. So as you can see, my left clicking is uh, heal. So a simple left click is heal. If I hold down shift it becomes greater heal. If I hold down control it becomes flash heal. Uh, and a few other variants in there as well. Dispel magic and power infusion that I've got with other keybinds, shift, control, click. You can literally customize them quite a lot. Uh, and then I have a uh, different set of um, spells for my middle click, powered shield, prayer of mending, uh, prayer of healing macro, pain suppression, leap of faith. And as I said, they're um, all your sort of standard healing spells. And of course, whenever you click any of those buttons, then on your Healbot UI, the relevant spells will be cast. Um, so you set it as you want, basically. And lastly, of course, you'll have your what your right click will do. Um, and that will be another set of spells. In my case, it's uh, Penance, Renew, Binding Heal, Cure Disease, and I've got Power Infusion there as well. I t I've got into a habit of um, shift control left clicking for Power Infusion on myself and shift control right click clicking for Power Infusion on a, a friend. That's the benefit of having uh, Power Infusion in your heal bot. You can click anybody within your, your raid to give them Power Infusion. Now, the first thing you'll probably be wondering is how do I enter a spell or how do I pick the spell that I want to enter into my uh, relevant click. So I'll go through that. It's, it's handy at this stage to have your heal, your, um, your spell book open because you've got the name of the spells there. But basically you just click within the uh, description part of the of the um, heal bot menu and you just type the name of the spell. You can also shift left click the spell directly from your heal book, uh, from your um, spell book, your War, Warcraft spell book and you can get it in that way. But I tend to type it. Bearing in mind it is case sensitive, so if it's flash heal, you have to put the capital F and the capital H. And then whatever spell you choose for that click is the one that of course will uh, be cast when you use that relevant click on your Healbot UI. Now it's interesting to note at that point there is some complicated additions to that which um, everybody might not know about and that is adding a macro to your Healbot. Um, sometimes you'll want to cast spells simultaneously. Uh, inner Focus, for example, and Greater Heal is one traditionally that Disc Priests will want to use simultaneously because you want to use Inner Focus on cooldown. So to do that, you click the little question mark on the right-hand side of the spell. You go to the Macros section. You've got a drop-down menu of all the macros you've created. Now, as you can see, all mine are there. And you just look for the name of the macro. Mine is G Heal, obviously referring to Greater Heal. Select it. And then to the right of the macros list, you press Select. Don't forget to do that. First time I... I set up this macro, I forgot to press that a few times, and obviously that can cause issues. But there we go. So now my shift and left click on my mouse will will cast Greater Heal with a macro. And I've got a similar set of macros set up for Prayer of Healing. As you can see, I create my macro in advance. There is a video on creating macros on my page if you look for that. And then you get any macros, you select P Heal from your list, which is Prayer of Healing macro, the one I just had. Press Select. And every time I press Control Middle, it will use my power inner focus and of healing. So there we go. Relatively straightforward. I, I rushed for that fast there. Obviously you can go back, review this video and slow it down and pause it at relevant times to see exactly what you do. But here's all my spells in action as you can see. I don't have to move around, I don't have to move my cursor around. Obviously clicking is not recommended, it slows down your DPS and heal per second. Um, so I can do everything just by clicking on my healing UI and of course if you've got five people in your group or 10 or 25 people in your raid, the way you set up your healing UI will have all the names close together and you can then dot around uh, the people within your raid and heal people without having to move your mouse and without having to do mouse overs, it's highly beneficial. 
Now, as you probably know if you use Hillbot, and I'm guessing you do if you're on this video, it's quite customizable. There are some pre pre uh, made uh, settings. Um, as you can see, the ones I'm clicking through now, the three that I use primarily magic, group, and ranged. I used group for obviously when I'm doing dungeons, I use magic for raiding, and I use ranged when I'm doing PvP. And it's it, very subtle differences that that you can add throughout your Hillbot. Um, one thing I do recommend is that you lock your heelbot, obviously, because sometimes you'll um, you'll move it back and as you're clicking, so make sure you lock it uh, before you go into raid because it can be it can be game breaking. Um, there's also other customizable things you can have it show main tanks as a priority. That means they appear at the top of the list all the time. Yourself at the top of the list. Uh, I don't. I have it sorted by groups because uh, a lot of uh, priest healing spells are group wide. Um, you can customize headers. I don't actually have any headers showing, but you can have the groups listed if you like. Uh, and then under the bars section within your your skins area, there's a customizable section there. You can adjust the height of each individual person's, or the the UI which um which shows each individual person. You can adjust the width. You can adjust, you adjust the column spacing, the number of groups per column, all that kind of stuff. And what I recommend is that you take a little bit of time, run some five man dungeons with some friends or some easier than five man dungeons, and um get your healing UI set up how you want it. I can't emphasize enough just how important it is to have a healing UI set up how you want it because what that will do is it will maximize your healing throughput and your heals per second. You'll have slightly faster reactions because you'll be comfortable where everything is. You'll be able to do those uh, game saving leap of faiths or pain suppressions or shields uh, and it will it will greatly aid your healing. Now one of the things that's very important is the income and heals opacity because what that means is it will show a person who isn't at 100% health, as I'm demonstrating here by a, a subtle fall. I take the damage, and every heal that's having income into that person, it will have a slightly shaded version of it. Now that's important so that you don't do so much overhealing, because it shows all of your healers in that. Uh, so by having your income and heals opacity set to a, a, sl um, a sl I have it about 38, 40, um, but not obviously high enough so that you don't notice if it's uh, if it's health that they've got there or or whatnot, but high enough so that it is actually visible. So a subtle, transparent 3840 is what I use. Now, well, as you'll notice here, um, the group that I've entered, uh, I've just entered a dungeon here to show you some, some little more things about Healbot. Uh, they're appearing red rather than green, and what that means is they're not buffed, and that's something you can set up on Healbot as well. And that merely means you have to left click them and it will automatically buff them. Very important in raids. And that's um, dealt with in another tab within your Healbot called Buffs. And you can list the buffs, and you can list where you want to check it, uh, and see all sorts of different things you can t put there, and you can list the colour. And I've, I've got it as red, so I know when somebody's red that they're missing a buff, and I can rebuff them straight away, just merely by clicking them. Um, there is one other thing that's quite important. I've got, I've got my raids uh, UI on at the moment, even though I'm in a group, because I want to show you a range uh, option that's quite important. I've mounted up here, and I'm going to run away from my group. Uh, and what you'll notice is. Um, as the people go out of range of my healing, they will fade out of your healing UI, and that's so important, especially in bosses where there's lots of movement, uh, lots of um, uh, groups that aren't together. You'll know who's in range of you, and it will save time in clicking people that you aren't actually in range of. So that's very, very good uh, to add into your UI, and that's dealt with in the same area um, that you customize the uh, incoming heal opacity. There's a range option in there, so you can deal with that in there. It's very, very important. Um, and it aids again. It's another one of those things that will aid your healing as you go through an encounter and as you as you raid. If somebody's out of range, it will also indicate that you need to move your position, which is quite important. Yeah, if you're healing a tank, for example, uh, on Zon's, Zonos, uh, possibly uh, suddenly they're out of range, and you, you you know you've got to walk close to them, obviously, to get healing. So it's um, it's a really beneficial thing to be able to know. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just quickly show you a, a little bit of leap of faith action. Um, as a, it's a great bit, it, it saves games. You'll see a Hagara video I'm about to upload where um, we got a um, a nice tomb on our paladin, um, which meant he couldn't taunt. So um, being able to use that very quickly and very swiftly, and that's one of the things that you uh, can add into your healing uh, UI via adding the spells that I showed before. Now the next bit of footage is basically just a healing in action. I've left my raid UI up. I'm sure I'll show you the things I've been talking about. Um, the little customizable things that I um, I showed you earlier on in this tutorial and it will show you them in action. As you can see this person here had taken a bit of damage and it meant they had fret so they over aggroed slightly to start there uh, and what was good is uh, you can add another element into your UI all customizable the same area that you um, that you do your income and heal opacity 
uh, and it will put a border around anybody who's got threat and that's really important because you can pain suppression you can preempt as a disc healer a lot of your healing will be trying to preempt the damage getting the shields out there nice and early so if you know who's got threat quite often it's important um, because you can you can preempt just a little bit more damage so yeah as you can see it's relatively straightforward once you've got it all set up it's it is a jewel in the crown of any any decent healer um, some healers resto uh, shamans resto druids mouse over macros work just as well quite often there'll be chain healing groups of people or putting down healing rains all that kind of thing as a disc priest you're yeah, and especially as a, an atonement disc priest you're balancing uh, atonement so you're holy fire and smiting the boss you're um uh, you're very rarely doing anything um, you haven't got any I should say and you haven't got any uh, a smart raid wide healing you'll be healing your prayer of healing is a, it's a group wide heal so uh, it doesn't make any difference whether you're healing with a mouse of a macro in this sense or using your healing UI as long as you ask your raid leader to group the, um, the melee together and the range together uh, when you use your healing UI um, when you heal a person in the melee it will heal AOE heal the other people in that group, which should be stood by them, which is hugely beneficial for a prayer of healing. Uh, another little bit of footage again, uh, it's the same dungeon, same group of people, that I, uh, uh, random pug um, on looking for dungeon, um, some people that were willing to put up with me randomly running out of range just so I could show my healing UI, but um, I'm showing little things on here as you can see, the magic debuffs and the um, uh, disease debuffs and how they get shown. You can set that up again. It's all in the customizable tab. As you can see, I've got ma magic on me, and I know uh, to dispel me. Uh, even though I'm a bit slow doing it, it wasn't wasn't the fastest to spell. But it actually, it just shows you that um, uh, you can change the color of people. You can highlight people that have got relevant buffs. Um, you can add debuffs, which is hugely important in some of the latter Dragon Soul content. There's two encounters in particular: Heroic Warmaster Blackthorn and Spine of Deathwing that have sort of debuffs that you need to be um, keeping a track of else it can cause trouble. So you can add those to your healbot as well. Um, and they are lo that's located obviously in the buff section. You write in the name of the buff, which can generally be found in your raid journal or your dungeon journal. Um, so if you need to know what the buff's called, and you literally just put the name of it in and your healbot will automatically track that buff then. So yeah, thank you for viewing this video and putting up with my um, rather inept tutoring of some of the healbot uh, stuff that is available to you. Um, it's one of those, UI is one of those add-ons that it pays to fiddle with it, it pays to sit down and spend a bit of time customising it to your likings because it's also very different and um, lots of different people will find different uses for it. Um, I found it as, as uh, very useful for my blood DK um, for resing and using uh, rune tap and whatnot. Uh, it's good on my warrior when I um, want to intervene. I can just you, you can put intervene there, and you can just click somebody you've got threat or whatever, and intervene to them. And um, the next video I'm going to do will be a a kind of like a real life slash gameplay merge, and it will be some real life footage of me actually doing a raid. It will show how my left hand and right hand work in conjunction with my left hand, of course, always being on the keyboard and working my keybinds, and my right hand then controlling the mouse. How I m position my hand to have ease of access to all my modifiers. I literally don't have to move my left hand very much when I'm reading from a, the very uh, specific um, segment of my keyboard. And my right hand then works my mouse. And it will show how I move around, uh, use my both mouse buttons to click and uh, QE and W to move around and get, give me the mobility that's required for end game reading. So that'll be in an upcoming video. So yeah, thanks again for viewing. Check out my other videos, subscribe, like, do all the usual stuff that people ask you to do on YouTube. Landry White.